Hi everybody, thanks for joining me. I'm Carrie from Otter Creek Homestead and today is April 24th and we, we're in southeastern Indiana and it's been unseasonably warm this weekend. It's actually been like um, a nice little gift from Mother Nature because I'm pretty sure we had some snow on Monday, last Monday, that would have been the 18th. So for it to be like 80 degrees yesterday and today has been great. Um, I am out doing stuff in the garden. I'm out in the greenhouse and I thought y'all could join me and see what kind of things we're doing, um, what things we're starting early, you know, in the ground. And um, I'm doing this to share with you, but also to have a record for myself because I know I'm going to forget half of the things I'm going to tell you and I'll want to know them later on. So here we go. The greenhouse was a disaster all winter. It doesn't look great now, but at least there's like a solid path you can walk in, which is nice. So I had started all of these seeds in the house um, around March 12th. Um, tomatoes, peppers, cucumber. We don't really need to start cucumber by seed, but I wanted to get a jump start on things. And I'm trying onion from seed too, which I've never started onion from seed and then transplanted it, so we'll see. Um, so let me walk you through some things I did. It was a lot and it's really warm in this greenhouse, especially when it's 80 degrees outside. So I've got the window open in the back and I've got this door, like there's a window that I've opened in the door, but it's not enough. So I have the door propped open. But anyway, um, I had a few fails. Well, at least one fail in here with these. I've got pepper. These are green pepper and eggplant. I've got everything um, labeled. See, I have like um, a metallic marker. This might be a, just a metallic Sharpie. So I tried to label everything as, um, you know, as I was putting it into these bigger containers. Because I had these seed starting trays and I had these labels I had just made up and stuck on there. And then as I was going, I wrote on each little, each little four pack or six pack what I was putting in it. And I'm trying a few things out here from seed in the greenhouse because it's a little bit later in the year so it's warmer and it doesn't get as cold at night. So I'm just gonna see what happens. This one right here is kale. I actually planted some kale in a bed, I'll show you. But I wanted to try it and see how it would do in the greenhouse compared to planting it outside in the raised bed on the same day, so we'll see. But I'm telling you that because, oh shoot. That's not kale, that's pickling cucumber. Oh, kale's back here. Huh, see? Okay, this one does not have a label, and it's kale. Okay, that one's the kale. Because I already took my marker inside. I don't want to leave my marker on here because I think it'll get ruined if it gets too hot. So I took my marker inside. But anyway, I wanted to try a few things from seed just to see how they would do in the greenhouse, you know, later in the year and see how quick they would, quickly they would germinate. And let me tell you, this is my first year ever to have seedling mats, little heat mats to put your seedlings on um, when you start them and let it makes... It made all the difference for me anyway. I had tomatoes germinate like within 48 hours. I was seeing things pop up. Cucumbers within 24 hours, they were they had germinated and were popping up. I was really, really surprised at how well, how quickly things germinated using those seedling mats. But the one thing that did not germinate was my basil. Um, I like this Italian basil. It's called, I don't know how to pronounce it exactly. It's Genovese. G-E-N-O-V-E-S-E, -E -E, I think is what it's called. I like it because it gets into like a big, a good sized bush, which means a lot of leaves for pesto. I might sneeze here in a minute, so bear with me. In case you hear them, if you hear something running, my husband's mowing. Um, so anyway, here's all the tomatoes. They all look really good and they all perked up from yesterday. I, I transplanted some of them yesterday and the rest of them today and they all perked up and they look great. So I'm super happy about that. Um, here are the onions. We're going to see. I, trans I transplanted them to a bigger container. We'll see. I actually got tired of doing it. I mean, because there's like a hundred of them here. So I was like, you know, we're just going to call the rest of this an experiment and leave them in the little seed starting pods that they're in and see how they do. But here's the big fail I had. Um, okay, so this is spaghetti squash, which spaghetti squash must not like to be um, started in as a as a seed indoors because they don't look great i only have two left i had planted a whole row of six and there's only two that even looked worth saving so i planted the rest of these four empty spots with seed which i know they'll pop up quickly and then 
these are a little watermelon my son found it's called a con i think a congo congo or conga congo watermelon it, it's huge it's not seedless it's seeded but it's humongous and watermelon is one of his favorites so we're growing it we're going to see what happens and then when we were out messing in the beds cleaning them up my husband was tilling them with a little tiller he found some Kentucky Wonder Beans that had already started. So we're just we're just trying some things. You know, what the heck? We got dirt. We got seed. Let's throw it in there and see what happens. But here's a big fail I did. I have this. This is a label from my little seed starting tray. So I had, it says cantaloupe times two, which means I had two rows of cantaloupe. And I had two rows of pickling cukes. And my dummy, my dumb self, I did not realize I was pulling out the cantaloupe and sticking it in little trays that I labeled pickling cucumber so the cantaloupe is in here somewhere but they're all labeled pickling cucumber but I think I can tell which ones they are because I think the cantaloupe have these smaller leaves see how this leaf is like smaller and th then this like this one here it's they're sh they're similarly shaped but they're like a smaller leaf and there's yeah I don't know I don't know. I, I don't know. So, we'll see. I'm hoping within the next two weeks I can tell. I, I don't know if I can or not. Because they all trail. So, I don't... They're not bush cucumbers. They, they go for trellis. And, of course, cantaloupe trails too. So, I don't know. We'll see. I hope I can tell eventually which is which. Otherwise, we may have cantaloupe and cucumber growing on the same trellis. And I don't know if they cross or not. I don't know. So, we'll see what happens. And honestly, what is this back here? Is this cucumber? Did I have that much? I already had mercy. Did I label this? Please tell me I labeled this. Oh, these are straight eights. Okay. Yeah, so there's other cucumbers too. I was actually good about the straight eights. They weren't planted by anything else. So anyhow, I left this label here, or I took it off my little seed starting tray and stuck it here so that I would remember. There are some cantaloupe in here somewhere, Carrie. Figure it out. So anyway, oh. And here's like a gross thing that happened. See this little spot here? Can you see it? Does it come through? Yeah, you can kind of see it. It's like this spot with like this red smear. My husband is out here mowing the garden because you know, it's weedy. Um, and before you can really till it, you want to weed it. I'm just collecting my little seed packets in my drink. Isn't that the cutest little rock? I love this. My or my kid found this at the, um, trails I think one day while we were walking and I was like you know what that's actually really cute out here in my greenhouse I'm gonna keep it so anyhow he's over here mowing the garden and I'm inside the greenhouse and I hear something smack the wall here can you see it I just can't tell if it's coming through it's like this red smear and I look at it and I'm like oh that looks like blood and fur and I come out here to look at it and it was the top half of a mole stuck to the side of my greenhouse. Apparently this little mole, he didn't see it cause it was weedy. Apparently this little mole must have popped his head out to see what all the ruckus was. And then the top half of his body ended up on my greenhouse. So that was not fun. Also, here's another fail I had. So I mislabeled cantaloupe as cucumbers. We killed a mole and its body stuck to my greenhouse. And then here in this bed, I planted, let me pull them out. They're snow peas. I thought because they were called a pea, you know, that, you know, I would kind of, kind of know what it was. Oh, maybe I didn't bring the packet out with me. Anyway, it's a snow pea. My kid loves snow peas and sugar snap peas. So I planted the snow pea down here to grow up on this trellis because we get wind from the south a lot. So we're facing, we are facing north right now. So we get wind from the south. So if I plant it on the north side of the trellis, if I planted it on this side of the trellis, which we did last year, the wind comes from this direction and it just wants to lay down, right? Because they don't really trellis that well. They don't have little things that reach out and grab onto stuff, little tendrils. So I wanted to plant it on this side of the trellis so that the wind would kind of push it up against the trellis all the time. Because you know, we have all these pine trees here and we don't get a lot of wind from that direction from the north so I planted them here well then after I planted them and I'm looking at the package now they are not trellising they are bush so I don't know how they're gonna do we'll see they're just for snacking and they won't last long because they're kind of a cool weather crop so I'm not gonna worry about it I'm not digging them up but they're just gonna do what they do and we'll snack on them when we snack on them 
And if it doesn't work out, we'll plant some in the fall. It's no big deal. But in this bed, which is our center bed, I planted lettuces. I planted first over here. This isn't this isn't a lettuce. This I planted kale first, dinosaur kale, and then arugula, and then tennis ball lettuce, and then butter crunch. So we'll see how they do. I'm not great at lettuces, to be honest. But I've never really tried that hard either, so I'm gonna try and see what happens. This is the earliest I've ever gotten them out, so I'm hoping like the next couple weeks of cool weather will really help them to like germinate and all that. Because it's like, in, I told you it's 80, 81 today, the high tomorrow is 64, and we're gonna have a couple cool nights like in the 30s, so I'm gonna have, I'm gonna have to keep a watch on the temperature and bring in my um, little plants if they, you know, if it's gonna get too cold. I just don't want them to freeze. I know they won't frost in there, but I don't want them to freeze. So in this last bed, we planted, well, this is our last bed because it's the furthest away from the house. Anyway, in this bed, I planted beets. We always plant Solyndra red beets. They're kind of a elongated beet instead of, like I know a lot of people like Detroit dark red and those are great, but sometimes they get so big that um, I have to cut them more than I want to when I can them. So if I do a Solyndra, then when I slice them, they're almost, or chunk them up, because that's what I actually I like to do, just like slice them in big chunks, then they almost always fit in a wide mouth jar. They don't get like their diameter, you know what I'm saying? They're not bigger than the opening of a wide mouth jar. So that's why I like them. They're just a little quicker for me to process. So this whole bed is cylinder beets. Hopefully they do well. I did plant beets in this middle bed last year and they did pretty well. We got a good little canning off of them and it was only half of the bed. So I'm hoping that the whole bed will give us a lot. And we're gonna plant beans again on this trellis, but can you see all these dead ones? Like all the dead vines and some dead pods that I never pulled off, they're just dried up. Do y'all know of an easy way to get these off? I mean, probably it would have been easier to get them off when they were still alive and green than when they're dead and, you know, because they just, they're brittle and they break. So if y'all know a way to get these off, like comment down below because it's kind of a pain. So I've been kind of picking at them and pulling them off. Well, I mean, we'll get them eventually. It's no big deal. In this bed, we're going to plant the onions that I have growing in the greenhouse. And I did find the sugar snap peas so i told you i had planted snow peas in that other bed that are not trellising i thought all peas would trellis but they don't so i planted the snow peas no that i just said that backwards that was snow peas that i planted over there i planted sugar snap peas that i here that we had planted last year on the other side of that trellis so this is a little row of sugar snap peas so i know those will grow up correctly <laughs> and leaned against the trellis because we've grown them. We grew the same seed last year. We actually saved seed from them, from the ones we did last year. And they were super easy to save seed from. I mean, they just dry on the pot and you pop them off. And if the seeds look good and healthy, then you just keep them. So anyway, here's the garden. It basically looks like, you know, lawn. Um, we're gonna try and do some spaghetti squash back there on that back trellis. Can y'all see that trellis? I swear to goodness, I am blind out here. So we're gonna do some spaghetti squash back there. Maybe some gourds, I'm not totally sure. I think I did buy some gourds, like some dipper gourds or some other kind of gourds. We like to grow fun stuff like that. And then we have these two little square boxes out here. This is the trellis we'll put our cucumbers on. You know, or cucumbers and cantaloupe, however it turns out. I don't know. I'll keep you all updated because I'm probably gonna mess that up. But whatever, right? One thing I love about a garden is, like, if it goes bad this year, you, you get to try again. Like, it's not like a one-and-done kind of deal. It's every year, so things don't go right. Then you remember, oh, yeah, I did not have my ish together last year. Let me try a little better this year. So, you know, some things do better, some things do worse. But anyway, in these two little boxes, I planted um, carrots. My little guy loves carrots. So, on the left are half long Danvers and on the right are Im Im Imper Imperator. It almost looks like Emperor but it's not. It's I-M-P-E-R-A-T-O-R. -E so that's why I planted there. And so I, I kind of thought he was going to try and till today but I don't know. I think he kind of put everything up so I don't know if that's going to actually happen. Because I do have some potatoes I wanted to plant. I didn't actually buy seed potatoes 
but I had two, I like to buy Yukon Gold, that's what we like to eat, and I had bought a couple bags of them, and, um, well, I bought one bag, and some of them, you know, I had them too long, and they, um, started growing eyes on them, some of the smaller ones, so I was like, I'll just keep these, and we'll put them in the garden, and then the next bag, the same thing happened, so I ended up with, like, I don't know, eight or ten small potatoes that I wanted to plant, we don't do potatoes often, but we have done really well with them. So I wanted to do just one row of potatoes and I'll show you when we do that because you don't have to plant the whole potato. A lot of people think you have to put the whole potato in, but you don't. You can cut it up into chunks and as long as your chunk has a couple eyes on it, it'll grow. So I'll show you that when we do it. I thought it might be today, but I don't think it's going to be today. But anyway, while he was out here mowing <laughs> or weed eating, he was like, mm, this looks like something. I'm not going to chop that up. And I'm glad he didn't because that's garlic so i didn't plant any garlic last fall so i'm glad to see this um we'll have a, a little bit of garlic i don't know what kind it is hush i'm trying to do a video for youtube <laughs> dang it jamie <clears throat> oh, that's my sister my mom lives next door my sister's being a turd <laughs> i guess i better wrap this up maybe i'll go over and bug her Anyway, thanks for joining me. I'll try to give y'all updates as we go along. Mostly for my own benefit because I'd love to just um, kind of keep my own little log or my own little diary of the garden. So anyhow, thanks for joining me. I hope you will again. If you aren't subscribed, um, please do. Here's our doggies. Here's Jack. And that's Chase. He's my mom and dad's dog. He pretty much hangs out over here a lot. Except for feeding time. And there's little Josie over there. Anywho, hope y'all are well. Take care. Until next time.